What's up guys, DRock 1992 here. For this next video, I am going to be talking about the movies that came out in the month of May. It is a little bit late as we are towards the midpoint in June. But without further ado, I am going to I have time now to do this. So I am going to be talking about the movies that came out in the month of May. So let's get started. The first movie that I'm going to be talking about is, um, it came out the week of May 6th, and it is already the number one movie of the year in terms of box office, and that movie is Captain America Civil War, and this is a movie that I actually, I got to see in theaters. I saw it with my father, um, and... I gotta say, I really, really enjoyed the movie. I reviewed the film. You can check it out on my channel. Um, but just a little, I don't want to get too much into it, but Captain America Civil War, you know, was a great watch for sure. Um, two sides, Captain America versus Iron Man, who's going to win? And it is, um, it was a very good film. As far as expectations-wise, it exceeded... It didn't exceed expectations for me, but it met all of my expectations. And I think it's a very, it's a very good film, for sure. So far, on a $250 million budget, it's made $1.134 billion. So, needless to say, it is the number one box office um, movie in this year so far, for, for a reason, for sure. Critically, it has a 90% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very high. One of the highest percentages for a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. There's been a few others that have had 90s uh, for reviews and all that, but, um, but this movie, 90%, very good. So, the next film I'm going to talk about, this is the week of... Um, it came out May 11th, and it is the one millionth film directed by Woody Allen. Just kidding, he's directed a lot of films, though. And uh, this film's a movie called Cafe Society, and I just wanted to talk about that briefly because Woody Allen is a big name in, in the as a director and as an actor and all that, and this is a movie that he made. And... So, this movie stars um, Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart, probably the, uh, yeah, it's Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart, who have been in a lot of movies together. They were in the movie, a movie last year called American Ultra, and I believe it was Adventureland, I want to say, was a movie they were also in together. So, this, these two are a pairing, for sure. Steve Carell is in this movie, Blake Lively, um, the wife of uh, Ryan Reynolds, um, and a few other names as well, directed by Woody Allen. So, so far, um, on a $30 million budget, it's made $5.4 million, which I don't think... Well, it's going to be a limited release. It, it is a limited release. Uh, well, actually, what, what's going to happen is that this movie is going to be a limited release, as in um, it's going to be opening July 15th, and then will open wide on July 29th. So there's still a chance for this movie to make a lot of money, for sure. Critically, the movie has a 73% so far, but that will change as the movie comes, you know, as we get to the release date of this film and all that. So that is Cafe Society. Uh, there's a couple movies uh, that I want to talk about here. Um, there's a movie I want to talk about here for May... Th for uh, June 13th, uh, a couple movies that came out, uh, excuse me, May 13th, and one of the movies is a horror film called The Darkness, 
uh, starring Kevin Bacon and Radha Mitchell. Uh, Radha Mitchell, probably best known for, at least for me, for the um, Olympus Has Fallen and London Has Fallen movies. So, I'm not a big horror fan. I'm not a big horror fan at all. I mean, I don't really watch a lot of them. So, I just wanted to mention it since it was a relatively big release. Not a huge release, but uh, people were aware of the movie. On a budget of $4 million, it made $10.6 million, which definitely um, has to be big for... Uh, there's this production company called Blumhouse Productions that has this reputation of getting big money makers out of horror movies with little budgets. So they take movies with little budgets and they they distribute the films and they turn out to be um, very good money, good money, good solid money makers for this production company. The reception on this movie, however, is only 5%. So that another reason why I wanted to talk about this film is that I knew this movie had a very low percentage on Rotten Tomatoes. So, yeah. Na dud in 2015, uh, for 2016. The next movie I want to talk about is a movie with two big stars, and that is Money Monster. Money Monster stars George Clooney and Julia Roberts, two of the biggest modern-day stars in Hollywood, for sure. Money Monster, I know, is about a a, a guy, a real... Uh, he's a uh, TV personality. Clooney's a TV personality who talks about money and who gives advice on stock market and all that sort of thing. And he gets kidnapped by a disgruntled viewer who lost all his money based on a bad tip that um, Gates gave. And so the adventure begins. Uh, the crazy, thrilling adventure begins for that movie. Um, Julia Roberts, I know, plays the producer of Clooney's show. Um, Clooney's TV show. Um, this is also directed by Jodie Foster who um, probably best known for her role in the Silence of the Lambs movie um, as her character, and I'm drawing a blank right now on the character's name. So, um, Jack O'Connell plays the, what you think is the bad guy in the film, the guy who takes Clooney's character hostage. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito also is in this film. He's been in a few films before and some other characters as well. So far, the movie has made 67 million on a 27 million dollar budget, which you have to consider is a pretty good success for this film. Critically, it's very mixed, 54% on Rotten Tomatoes. So, um So yeah, I mean, two big stars, mixed critical reviews, and pretty good money made. Um, I've heard a little bit about this movie being a cable watch on a Saturday, on a Sunday afternoon, or something like that, which maybe isn't the best recommendation uh, for this film. But either way, mixed reviews, so not everybody hated it. So anyway, uh, let's see here. There was a big week, May twentieth. There are a few. There are there are three movies that I want to talk about here. Yeah, three movies that I want to talk about here. Three wide releases. I believe all wide releases that came out May twentieth. And the first one is the Angry Birds movie. That's right, the Angry Birds movie. They have a movie about that video game, the Angry Birds. So, the Angry Birds movie uh, stars an all-star voice cast. Jason Sudeikis, Josh Gad, Maya Rudolph, Danny McBride, Kate McKinnon, Sean Penn, Bill Hader, Peter Dinklage, and more. So, this is based off the video game uh, that many people enjoyed. It was 
probably probably one of the most addicting video games of all time, I would imagine. I played it, and I was okay at it, for sure. But, um... Critically, this movie's made a lot of money, by the way. Its target audience is more of the younger viewer generation, maybe some teens mixed in there, but more so the younger viewers. And this movie's made a lot of money. $73 million budget. It's made $286.2 million thus far. Probably more time for it to make more money, but either way, I mean, this film's been successful. Critically, it has a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes, so very mixed. So the general public, or the critics were very mixed on the opinion of this film and all that, but definitely a big money maker for the uh, studio um, that distributed the movie. So the next movie I'm going to talk about here is the sequel to a favorite comedy of mine that came out a couple years ago, Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising. I really enjoyed the first Neighbors movie that came out in 2014. I've seen it twice. And I, I laugh pretty much, every, I've laughed every time I've seen it. I mean, I think it's a very good comedy. Some of Seth Rogen's best work. So Sorority Rising, it stars a, re, a re-teaming of Seth Rogen, Zac Efron, and Rose Byrne, who were in the first film. Uh, Dave Franco, also from the first film, comes in. But one of the main newcomers of the of this sequel is Chloe Grace Moretz, who probably is best known for playing Hit Girl in the Kick-Ass movies. Um, she was also in a great movie called The Equalizer that came out a couple of years ago um, that I've talked about on this channel. So Neighbors 2 Sorority Rising, instead of... This movie's about... Instead of Rogan and Byrne battling a fraternity, they have to battle a sorority, which is a college event, a college, uh, college gathering for girls, basically. So, Sorority Rising, um, I have not seen the movie. I really want to go out and see it. Have not seen it yet, but, man, <laughs> this movie I really want to see. Uh, $35 million budget. It's made $90.8 million thus far, so a very good total for it. Still out in theaters, I believe, however, so it'll make more money. Um, and critically, the movie has a 62% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, that's significant because the re reception of comedy sequels is not always good. Most comedy sequels fail, and it's mostly because they try to replicate the original. Uh, film and they don't do it with much as much success as the first offering. While Neighbors, I think, had like in the 70s for percentages, I think on Rotten Tomatoes, this one has um, a 62%, which is very good. It's a passable grade for sure. Um, it's very passable and. A lot of people, you know, the people were enjoying the film. They came out and they saw it for sure. So, this is a movie I really want to see, though. Really want to see. And I hope, fingers crossed, that I get to see it soon. The next movie I'm going to talk about is directed by a well-known director named Shane Black. Probably best known for directing Iron Man 3, uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, I think was also a film he directed. And he wrote the screenplay for the Lethal Weapon movies, too. Uh, and this movie is The Nice Guys. This movie's gotten a lot of buzz. Um, this movie has gotten a lot of buzz for being a great movie and all that. Um, this stars Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, two big stars. Uh, these two are... Um, Crowe's an enforcer. Gosling is, I think, an FBI agent or something like that. Some type of... Or a private investigator. That's what he is. They have to battle crime together. These two unlikely, uh, this unlikely pair has to battle crime in uh, 1970s time. So this movie I'm actually quite curious of seeing. 
Uh, so far, on a fifty million dollar budget, it's made forty one point nine million. And I don't think this film is really meant to be a huge, huge money maker. I don't, I don't know person. I don't really know personally if it's meant to be a big money maker for the studio. So far, not great, but. What it'll probably end up doing is making back its budget a little bit more, maybe, um, probably breaking even. So the critical reviews for this movie is great. 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. A very good rating for this film. So The Nice Guys, a movie that I'm very curious of seeing. Uh, the next films that I'm going to be talking about here, they're actually the last two films on this list. They came out the same weekend, May 27th, and the first one I'm going to talk about is the sequel to the 2010 movie Alice in Wonderland, Alice Through the Looking Glass. And <clears throat> this is this came out six years after, and uh, I believe the first Alice in Wonderland got a lot of mixed reviews from the critics and all that. Um, this is a continuation of the Alice in Wonderland story, and it's based on one of the books by uh, the author of Alice in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll. Uh, this movie stars, as in the first film, it stars Johnny Depp, Anne Hathaway, Mia Wasika, Wa Wasika uh, whatever her last name is, well, hard name to pronounce. Helena Bonham Carter is also in this film, and a couple, Alan Rickman is in this film. And sadly, Alan Rickman is, this is his final film, because he actually recently passed away. Uh, passed away back in uh, January. So, unfortunately, we lost a great actor, for sure. Um, maybe I'll, pro I'll probably talk about him in another video or something like that, but, but here, um, you know... Yeah, I mean, there's a big cast in this movie. Sasha Baron Cohen, I believe, is a newcomer in this film. Budget-wise, on $170 million, it has made $184.7 million so far, which is kind of a little disappointing, but it's still early. This movie is still going to make some money, so it, but it won't be a huge, huge moneymaker for Walt Disney Pictures. Uh, the movie itself, critically, only has a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I believe is considerably lower than the first movie. So, just not a lot of people loving the movie critically, um, for sure. And then the last movie I'm going to talk about is a big blockbuster film. Another comic book movie. Can you believe it? Another comic book movie in the month, in this this year, we've already had Deadpool, we've already had Batman v Superman, we've already had Captain America Civil War, and now we get our fourth film, X-Men Apocalypse. X-Men Apocalypse is the ninth installment in the X-Men film series. Um, so far, I've only seen the first film before. i got to work on seeing all the films, for sure. Because this movie sounds very intriguing to me. Uh, this stars, you know, the usual cast, James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, uh, um, Rose Byrne is back in this film, um, Rose Byrne again making an appearance in May, uh, a film appearance in the month of May, so a lot of the same people come back for the film, Jennifer Lawrence I believe plays Mystique. McAvoy, I think, plays Professor X. Fastbender, I think, plays Magneto. New characters coming coming in. Two of the most prominent ones are Oscar Isaac. To me, the most prominent ones. Oscar Isaac plays the character Apocalypse. The X-Men have to stop Apocalypse from uh, conquering the world. So this is basically the plot of the film. And then Olivia Munn plays... Um, one of the one of the uh, accomplices to Apocalypse, and, and I gotta say, I mean, I think Olivia Munn as 
<laughs> I, I think Olivia Munn in that outfit, you just see pictures of her. Um, you see a picture of her, and I'm sure a lot of teenage boys have seen a picture of her. I think that her in that outfit is every teenage boy's wet dream. I'm just saying, you know, just, I mean, I mean, it's, I know it's kind of been, it's my wet dream, too. It's just, she is, wow, she's so hot. <laughs> wow. Um, and Jennifer Lawrence isn't that bad looking either, for sure. She definitely is a pretty attractive woman. Uh, so... Overall, on a budget of $178 million, it's made $424.9 million, and it's definitely going to make more. Will it creep into the top 10 for box office? Stay tuned to find out, but, um, you know, yeah, already it's a big moneymaker for Fox Studios, uh, for Fox and their comic book division, um... Critically, however, First Class and Days of Future Past, I know, got high reviews. I think they both are in the 90s in overall reviews. This one, however, has a 47% on Rotten Tomatoes, so very considerably lower. And from what I've heard, Jennifer Lawrence doesn't give the best performance as Mystique. I've heard she kind of mails it in. And from what I've also heard, the villain isn't the greatest as well. But um, but it is still an X-Men movie. People love X-Men, and they're still going to go see this movie for sure. And the box office totals, they definitely indicate that. And that is it for the movies in May. You know, looking at June... And I'm not going to get into any of the films in June. Looking at June, there's some exciting films coming out. Some films that I really do want to see for, for definite sure. So once, ju once June is done and over with, I will be talking about the movies that came out in June. But for now, that's it for the movies of May. And a quick uh, overview of those movies. D-Rock 1992, out.